Hey Canucks fans, yet another exciting game, yet another win for the Vancouver Canucks, defeating the Winnipeg Jets 4-3 at Rogers Arena in a shootout, second straight shootout game. Let's talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and one other thing. I was at the game tonight with Jason of Van City Experts. You guys, you guys always hear me talk about Jason Lim and his team at Van City Experts Real Estate Group. So Jason treated me to the game tonight. A lot of fun. We had a great chat. Great chat about my channel. I'm excited to introduce some new things over the next few weeks. But overall, we really appreciate the company. And I guess that's the first thing I liked was actually nothing that happened on the ice. and But rather spending that time, that quality time with Jason. On the ice itself, so many things that I did like. Even before I get to individual performances, I liked the game itself. I liked the overtime. It wasn't a defensive masterpiece at all. It wasn't a defensive clinic at all, but it sure as heck was entertaining. It got more entertaining as the game went on. That overtime was just nuts. Nine shots on goal in that overtime. Five for Winnipeg, four for Vancouver. And there were probably of those nine, maybe four or five of them were breakaways. It was just crazy. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. I don't know if I'd be saying the same thing if the Canucks had lost, but still, it was a lot of fun. So I, I like that. Overall, the entertainment of the actual game was great. Thatcher Demko, another 34 save performance. The only ones that beat him are either deflected or cross ice passes where he has no chance. So I like De Demko's game. He was actually named the third star. He could have been easily be named the first star once again. Loved it. I, and I, I like the fact that... Uh, the potential, I think it was a go-ahead goal that was called off because of goaltending goaltender interference. That's the only way you're going to beat Demko. Whether you deflect it past him, whether you do a cross-ice pass where he has no chance, or you run into him in the crease, causing a goaltender interference penalty. So I like that challenge too by Bruce Boudreaux. Obviously, you need to be confident because if you lose that challenge, not only does the goal count, but then you take a two-minute minor as well. So good challenge by Bruce Boudreau and of course after that challenge was successful you heard the chance of Bruce there it is Bruce there it is in the in the arena as well Niels Hoglander two goals two goals both in the first period and I was joking around to Jason saying because he was wearing a hat I said if Hoglander scores what would you do if I grabbed your cap and I threw it onto the ice to celebrate the hat trick well Hoglander did not get the hat trick but still great great performance by him Five shots on net overall, one hit, one block, and the two goals, like I said, both in the first period. And different type of goals. The first one, he made an amazing play to transition from forehand to backhand after he was basically almost falling to the ice, putting it past Eric Comrie, who's not the best goalie. And then it certainly showed on Huglander's second goal where it went off of Comrie's glove, and that was totally against the flow of the play, especially as Winnipeg was getting chance after chance. So like Huglander's game and Horvat actually assisted on both of Huglander's goals. So I thought Horvat had a quietly good game as well. 19 minutes of ice time, 58% in the faceoff circle and those two assists. Connor Garland was very noticeable once again. Not only that third goal where he deked Eric Comrie out of his whatever equipment you want to name, that was nice, just the nice little head fake and then and tucking it behind him. But overall, noticeable once again, three shots on goal, uh, one hit as well. So I, I like Connor Garland's game. Brock Besser didn't get any points, but he had five shots on goal. I thought he was noticeable as well. And then Petey. Yeah, I liked, uh, you know, I would like him to do more during the game. Uh, no points, but he did score the only goal in the shootout. Beautiful goal. Maybe that is the goal that gets him some confidence, gets him going, gives him some momentum. Also, he rang one off the crossbar in the third period. So those two chances, the crossbar and then the goal in the shootout, although it doesn't count in your personal stats, aside from shootout stats, but doesn't count in the regular goal tally for the year. But that was good to see. And then um, I will say there, there's some problems with the defensive play for sure. It's a little scrambly. But I'll, I'll give credit to guys like Shen, Two guys like Burroughs and Hunt who are probably playing a little bit more than they are used to. Yes, Hughes at 26 and a half minutes. Myers at 26 minutes. Pullman at 21 and a half minutes. So those are the three guys that you expect to carry the heavy load. But Shen, Burroughs, and Hunt did pretty well. So a lot of things to like about tonight's game. A couple things I didn't like. I didn't like uh, some of Tucker Pullman's game. I thought he struggled a bit. 
I thought Meyer struggled at times, especially that giving uh, that giveaway for the breakaway in the first period. And overall, the Canucks as a team didn't do well in defending the cross ice pass. I know the second and third Winnipeg goals were cross ice, cross crease passes. Not sure where the breakdowns are. I have to rewatch some of the highlights. So I didn't like that part of the Canucks game. I did like the fact that with Miller, Besser, Pedersen, and Hughes out for the last 49 seconds of overtime with a power play, four and three, they didn't shoot until there were 10 seconds left in the game. So I'm not, sh- with 50 seconds left, I don't think you worry about the other team going down and scoring shorthanded in overtime. I think you just get shots to the net and and, and play assertively, make defense, make the defense make a decision. But to go 40 of those 49 seconds without a shot, that was a bit frustrating, a bit maddening. We don't really we won't really worry about it now because the Canucks won in the in the shootout. But if the Canucks had lost in the shootout, you we'd all be looking at those that 50 second power play and saying, why didn't they uh, play with a little more urgency then and there? And then I thought Tanner Pearson. Many people talk about this. He struggled a little bit. Was seemed to be always falling down the ice or always fanning on good opportunities. Still ends up with a decent stat line. I actually know he didn't. One shot on goal, three hits. I thought it was three shots on goal, but it was only one shot on goal and three hits. So I think Pearson had one of his his rougher games in a while. But I'm not calling for his head. I'm not calling him to be traded. But we can objectively say that he did not have a strong game. One other thing. Well, Bruce Boudreaux, they're three and zero now. And uh, Bruce said, Boudreaux said that he's not worried about making the playoffs or making up all the games all in one fell swoop. He did say, Low, we just got to win every week. So no matter what happens against Carolina, they've won the week. They've won three straight already. So even if they beat Carolina, well, they, they go 4-0 this week, which is awesome. If they lose, they still go 3-1. and So you've won the week and you've made up ground in the standings. By my count, they still got to get 70 points in the remaining 54 games now. So if you add in four overtime or, or shootout losses, they kind of need to go 33, 17, and four. Not bad, actually, when before it was like 36, 17, and four. Now with three straight, it's 33, 17, and four. So they're slowly climbing back in the standings. They are now seven points out of a wild card spot. Granted, a lot of teams have games in hand. But at least we're, we're talking about the playoffs as not just a miracle, but more of a, uh, whatever the category is, less than a miracle. I still think it's going to be tough for them to do because the hole is so big, but you can't argue with three straight wins. And this is the type of team where, you know, these two games could have two games could have gone either way, the Boston game or the Winnipeg game. Of course, by nature of them going to extra time, they could either team could have won. But I like the fact as well, and this is part of one other thing, what I like. I like the fact that the Canucks are finding ways to win. But tonight was a fun, entertaining, sloppy game. And uh, we'll see what happens on Sunday when they face a very tough Carolina Hurricanes team. By the way, I'm 6-0 and in my predictions in the last two weeks. For Canucks Week at a Glance, I predicted all three games properly last week, win-win-loss. And then for this week, I predicted win-win-win-loss. So I'm actually hopeful that I'm wrong on Sunday and that the Canucks indeed beat the Carolina Hurricanes. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. Tell me one other thing. Leave it in the comments below. And don't forget, if you do that, you'll be entered in the draw at the end of December to win a $50 gift certificate to Van Base. Shout out to my hero members, Nucks fan number 29, Justin Incredible, Lucas Gates, and Andrew Chang. Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, Carol Bovenlander, and HSM Fangirl Gaming. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks for the support of all members. If you want to become a member of this channel or upgrade your membership, click on the Join button down below or on the Memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you'd like to, become a member of this channel if you'd like to, and leave a comment down below if you'd like to. What you liked, what you didn't like, and one other thing. And lastly, a, a thank you to my lead sponsors, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. You can sign up now for a free seven-day trial using the link in my video's description down below. And to Jason Lim and his team at Van City Experts Real Estate Group. Contact Jason and his team for any of, of your real estate needs. And I thank you to Jason for bringing me to the game tonight, despite the fact that we got pelted in a rainstorm on the way back to our car. All right, friends, stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great night or a great morning or a great day whenever you're watching this. God bless and go Canesco.